Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie from Braga Debris School. I'm so excited you guys are here with me tonight. Tonight we are going to talk all about a um, some fun ideas for a Christmas Christmas theme. Um, so I want you to tell me in the comments, tell me below, do you do a Christmas theme in your classroom? Are you not allowed to? Do you do holidays around the world? Um, do you do mostly gingerbread or winter? So tell me what theme you kind of do um, in December um, during the holidays. Um, and then at the top of this post, you will find links to all of the things, um, links to my TPT store, my blog, which make sure you go over there after this um, Facebook Live to grab um, the freebies I have for you. My newsletter sign up is there. And um, yeah, links to all the things are, um, are, at, the, are at the top. Um, so yeah, so hello, hello everyone. Thanks for coming tonight. I'm so excited you guys are here. Here's the Christmas one I talked about. It was chickpeas and ornaments and little cupcake holders. Um, so a whole bunch of really, really fun ones. So like I said, there's freebies on my blog. Um, there is a candy cane pattern freebie, which I forgot to print. <laughs> um, basically, it's like a printable candy cane and they can either paint or draw or dot a pattern on it. So that one's on there. And then there's also, this really fun Christmas wish list. Um, so basically what kiddos do is you take some magazines, you rip out the pages because we all know if they're all together like this, it, it's, it can be really tricky. So kind of rip out the pages and then um, have them on a tray. If you don't have like any holiday catalogs, you can always use like a Lakeshore or a Discount School Supply catalog because those are packed with toys too, even though they're educational toys, those are in there. Um, so yeah, so that way they can do some fine motor and then cut out everything. If your kiddos are struggling cutting out pictures like this, you can always give them some bounce back scissors and they can um, get some little help and some support bouncing those scissors back open. Um, these are great. Or I think they're actually called loop scissors. Um, so yeah, so these are awesome. Or um, also, it's kind of hard for sometimes for kiddos to visually discriminate and see kind of where to cut. So you can either have them or you can draw a circle around what they want. And then that gives them that line and then they can cut on that line. Um, and these are fun to um, keep in their portfolio for a um, cutting sample. So it's not just a fun random activity. It's just a really fun reason to cut, right? They will cut for hours if they're cutting out a wish list. So this is a freebie on my blog. So again, the link is for that is at the top and make sure you grab that after we are done. So that's one fun idea you can do. You can make some holiday sensory bottles. And again, the link to this, um, all the details are on my blog. This one just has some holiday confetti in it and glitter. Um, and these are great to put in your safe place, put in your science center, put, um, I always put these in the spot where my kiddos have to wait in line for the bathroom as they're waiting to wash hands, like for a snack or something. Um, it's a perfect spot for those. This one just has loom bands in it. This one's really fun because they slowly sink to the bottom and then they kind of get stuck. Um, so it's really fun. That's a fun one. It's just loom bands and water. And then this one has jingle bells in it. Um, so you don't always have to use liquid in those sensory bottles. And some kids like um, having the, like a dry substance in um, the sensory bottle. It's always fun. You can always put two, um, a magnet one with this and try and move the jingle bells. Um, so those are some fun sensory bottles you can do, again, for your calm down space or your science center. Um, and the, I have like full details on all of these on my blog, which again, the link for that is at the top. And I want you guys to tell me in the comments, what is your like all time favorite Christmas activity you do every year with your students um, in the comments? Because I love learning from you guys and we can, I'm, la, la, la. <laughs> we can always learn from each other, right? My, I would say my favorite activity of all time is um, I forgot to grab this. <laughs> um, it is uh, those magnet blocks or like um, any kind of magnet blocks with jingle bells. And the jingle bells will stick to the magnet blocks. And they can build these beautiful towers or structures and then add in all the jingle bells, which are so fun um, for the holidays. So let me tell you some art ideas. So we all love spin art, right? So you put it in the salad spinner and then they spin, spin, or squirt some paint in there and then spin, spin, spin. I usually get my salad spinners from Walmart or Ikea, but it makes really cute 
ornaments. So after they're dry and they're already a circle, <laughs> um, you just put a little ribbon on them and now you have little um, ornaments for um, to hang around in your classroom or on your class tree. Um, so that's so much fun. I think one that we all love is the bows. So you take a bow and I always make a handle out of it. I kind of squish together the little um, sticky part, which is, is, look at all that great fine motor, all that pencil grass work going on right there. And then they push it in paint and then they push and then they make these gorgeous, gorgeous um, art paintings. Oh my gosh, I just got paint. <laughs> this one I actually used <laughs> with paint. Um, so it's spread in like dry paint stuff all over the place. Um, so yeah, so that's really fun. Sorry, I was reading um, some of your guys' comments. So much fun. Um, and I always like to too. I didn't because this is one I keep in my bin. But it's fun to like put a bow on this so that way parents and families know kind of what it is that made this really cool design or texture. So that's a fun idea. Candy canes on pipe cleaners. I think this is like super fun, great fine motor, great for hand-eye coordination. And you can put it on the tree, send it home with families, and it's a gift, a decoration, fine motor, hand-eye coordination, and if you can have them make patterns. So there's tons and tons of skills you can pack into these little candy canes. Um, and I usually buy my beads at the end of like, I would buy my beads for next year at the end of the season, or um, you can go to Michael's and grab them like when they're um, when they're on sale um, to get some pony beads, or sometimes the Dollar Tree has them. And then this is so fun. This is like what I gave for parent gifts a couple, two years ago. So what it is, is it's a directed drawing. So I always have them practice this first in their fine motor journal. Um, and then after we do that, then they try it um, and do it for the art. Um, so what they do is they draw all the different steps. And this is a great visual, it's on my blog. This is another fun freebie. Um, so what they do, here's kind of an in process one. So what they do is they draw it first in permanent marker or you can have them draw it in pencil and then trace it in permanent. But I typically just have my kiddos draw it in permanent marker first. And we do it together as a small group. Um, and I say, okay, first we have to draw the oval head. Remember, our oval goes around, 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 stop. I model it and then they do it. And then I'll say, oh, what comes next? Oh, his eyes, he needs some eyes. And then we draw a little circle, little circle. And then the pupils we add in. So we do, I do each step and then I use some words with it, like around, 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 stop for the oval. And then they do it and then you can use watercolor to paint um, all, all of it in. So I always have them say, okay, trace your reindeer first and then you can fill in the background. Now sometimes, especially if they're itty bitty, like three, they will get tired before they have time to fill in that background and that's no big deal. They can always come back and do it the next day or you can kind of fill in the little spots or you can leave it open. And then what I did for a parent gift, this is my own kiddos, he was in my class, I just put it um, on some cardstock and then I laminated it in a pouch and I had them write their name at the bottom. Um, and then it was a, a cute parent gift and it was free and so fun. And again, this is on my blog for free, so make sure you go grab that. Now, whew, that was a lot of fun stuff. Now I have, I have some very, very, very exciting news. So, so the fine motor activity for the Christmas centers are these reindeer feeling mats. So I didn't have time to laminate this. So I just actually put it in a page protector and I just cut it in half, which the, this is a really simple um, teacher hack that you can do if you don't have time to laminate something and you don't wanna ruin your um, the color copy. So what they can do is they can just take their feeling mat and they can then pick a feeling card. So maybe they wanna make him sad so they could draw his sad eyes and his tears. And so they're gonna draw it with a, um, they could draw it with an Expo marker and that's why I put it in the little pouch so that the way that it's easy to erase. You could also, they could use Play-Doh to make the little face by rolling little like Play-Doh snakes or just kind of making it with little punches of Play-Doh. And, or you could use like loose parts, like, um, like just different little things you have in your classroom. Um, so here are some of the little feeling faces 
for the little reindeer. We have excited, frustrated, surprised, silly, mad, worried. So there's like, I think nine feeling cards included. And there is a black and white version. So if you wanted them to cut and paste um, one of the feeling cards on and then color it, that's an option too. Um, so this is the fine new fine motor activity for the Christmas centers. And then the cutting activity was already in there, but I just wanted to show it to you guys again. So you get basically a paper cutout. And then what they're gonna do is they are going to cut paper strips. And I like using um, sometimes scrapbook paper and you can get scrapbook paper sometimes pretty cheap or you can ask families to donate it. Um, so what they're gonna do is again, those scissor skills, and this is what, um, this is one thing teachers have told me, especially um, after COVID, um, their fine motor and their scissor skills are weaker than ever. Um, so you, I usually cut out this part, and then the kiddos can just cut these paper strips. And this is fun to do in kindergarten. Again, we're just practicing scissor skills, um, and then they just glue it on. And you can put like brown at the bottom. There's some brown strips I had on, out on the table and they glue those for the trunk. And that is the fun scissor skills activity for the Christmas math and literacy centers. And then this is literally how I keep my activities. I literally put all the extra strips in a baggie. Oh, this is my another sample I had. Um, if I have a sample, I throw that in there. If I have any cut trees I put those in there that way I can just pull it out um, for next year and I am more ready to go um, so that's the cutting activity and then are you guys ready for this I'm so excited it is a this is my favorite thing out of the whole unit that I added so um, you guys told me you love the make a card um, activity or the make a card station for, for the Valentine's activity or the Valentine Center. So I made one for Christmas. So we have Santa's mailbox. I literally just put it on like a, a bin. You can put it on a box, whatever you want. And I do have some different Santa options for you guys to pick from. Um, so yeah, so you just literally put it on a bin, grab some envelopes or not. I forgot to grab some. And then I have these little tree cutouts so they can cut those out. Um, I have some stickers and then I have, this was already in there, but you can have this Dear Santa letter so you can put those out. Or you can just fold some paper in half and you have blank cards. Here's some of the Christmas paper that's included. And then I also have little stamps, little Santa stamps. Oh my gosh, look. So they can put these on the outside of their envelope. And then I have some little um, word cards. And again, all the word cards, they come in uppercase and lowercase. So we have Merry Christmas. We have Happy Holidays. We have I Love You. And then we have I Miss You, because some families don't get to see each other on the holidays. Um, and then we have Thank You, because we want to show that we're thankful or um, we need, you know, using our manners after we get a present. So you have thank you as an option too. And then you can always put washi tape in there. Um, you can put some, just some cut up stickers. And then I do have this make a card, stack the table, <laughs> and this little make a card um, little sign to put up so that cards need pictures and words. I tried to kind of make a kid looking picture on there so that the, you can like hang this up and say, oh my gosh, I love your card. You'd put a tree on there. You could put dot um, dot markers on this. Um, and I also don't forget to put those word cards out there of the students' names. So that way they may want to write a Christmas letter to a friend. Um, here's a letter that a friend did one year um, before I had this set up, but here's just one he did. Merry Christmas. It's Christmas, not Sam. <laughs> Christmas. Um, and then he drew a tree on the inside and covered the whole back of the card with wash tape. So, and then what he could do is he, if it was a letter to Santa, he could put it in here. If not, they could put it in an envelope and put a little Santa little stamp on it and then they can put it in their mailbox and they can bring it home and then give it to their family or who or their friend or whoever it's for but it's just a really fun real reason to write um so based on your guys's request i added this fun 
card making station with Santa's mailbox. So they can either write a letter to Santa or they can make a card for somebody in their family or a friend in the classroom or a teacher. And again, the word cards, the little tree, cut out trees, little stamps and um, are all going to be included. So that's going to be in there. So much fun. I was so, so excited when I added um, that to it. And then we had, so these Christmas light letters were always in my center pack, but I, I wanted to like kick it up a notch. So there were these Christmas light letters. These were already in there. So like one thing you can do with them is put them in ABC order on a ribbon with some clothespins. And um, oh, my all my trays are from either Lakeshore or Target, um, the Target like dollar spot during back to school. Um, so they can put the letters in ABC order. And if you put clothespins and a ribbon on there, Look at all this great fine motor, that opening and closing, like that scissors, um, that scissor motion. Um, you can always do a writing tray. So they shake, shake, shake. This is just some um, color. Oh, this is actually colored sand from the Dollar Tree. I like to put a little pom pom in there so they um, have to grasp it. And then they make their letter, like they can make the letter O, O. And then they can shake, shake, shake to erase. And then pick the next one. Z, and then they can make the Z, trying to make it backwards and upside down. Oh, sorry about that. And then shake, shake, shake to erase. And then, um, yeah, so that's always an option. We always know I love a good writing tray. Um, but this one didn't have a mat in it, so I added this Christmas tree background, and all I did was I taped a piece of ribbon to it, so now they can either, you can either match if you don't, Want to do a writing tray that's totally fine they can match the uppercase with the lowercase letter so they could match that and i also added a can you see it it's, it's, it's very light but it's a um tracing letters worksheet on there and then um there's also sight word cards which i forgot to grab um but those are in there too so instead of making the they can match the uppercase with the lowercase they could do sight words like they can make pick the sight word card me we're just gonna pretend it's right here because i have it it's included i just forgot to grab it and they can make their sight word um little in lights on the tree and then they could write it on one of the included word cards so again if this one was already in there i just added the little um tree to it and i added another worksheet so that is so fun like wait there's so many fun ways you can use these um christmas light letters in your classroom oh my gosh you could also do student names with them like you could have a name card and then they could write their name with the christmas light letters that would be really fun too so so many things you can do with um christmas light letters so that's another idea and then this is one of the other new activities so it is a it is a letter sort. So they they have a whole bunch of stocking letters. So we got little stocking letters. So like here's lowercase x, lowercase p, and then there's uppercase as well, of course. Oh, here we go. Like here's the uppercase y. So what they're gonna do is they can sort the letters different ways. And this is just a fun way for them to practice letters and start noticing how the letters are different and how they're the same. So they would do holes and no holes. So like y would be no holes. O would be a hole. And then they can sort it that way. There's also curves, straight lines, or both. So like Y would be straight lines. A P would be curves, and they can just stack them up on there. And then we have in my name, not in my name. And then we have an uppercase, lowercase sort. And then there's always, um, there are worksheets included, so they would just pick the letter card why I did in my name, not in my name, and they would write, oh, I do not have a Y in my name, and they would write it down there. So again, this is one of the new activities that will be coming, so fun, for making letters. So this one was in there, but I added more to it. So some people were telling me that some of their kiddos just aren't always ready to do um, beginning sounds. 
So this one originally was a beginning sound game. They take the letters and they would say Santa S and they would match the manipulative. These are just some letter beads I have and they would match it in there. Quarter Q and they would put the matching letter in there um, and so on. And there was one for each of the alphabet. Well, some um, teachers told me that one was a little bit too tricky. So I also added just letter card presents. So now they're just going to take the letters and they can just match the letters to the letters. And then um, I added a worksheet to this one. This one was already in there. And then I added this one if you're working on letters. So this one will be added to... And then this one was already in there, but I love a good letter dotted. It's so fun. And it's just another way to do letters. But I wanted to remind you guys, there's so many different ways you can do letter dotets. I usually put a little cup of magnet letters out. And I've done this um, at like during circle or um, where everybody gets um, a letter board and they get a bingo dabber and they can dot or you can do it for a small group. And they can, you pick the letter W, W, and they have to dot the letter with the bingo dabber, or if you don't want to make it into a worksheet, they can use their, whew, I have jingle bells in here they can cover it with. So they would pick the letter W, and they can either cover it with that letter, or they can cover it with a manipulative, like a jingle bell, or a little mini eraser, working on um, those little fine motor muscles as they cover those up. So, two different ways to do one game. And then we have a rhyming game. This one was already in there. I added a worksheet to this one. So we have all of these different rhyming trees. And they are basically just matching the rhymes. So, yep, and then the, the rhymes are ornaments. So they would have to match hat. Oh, that, and then they have, I do have the icon in the corner. So what rhymes with bat? Pen, no, hat. Yep, that one rhymes. So they are putting the um, rhymes, and then we have mat, hat, bat, and then we have log and dog, and then the rest of the ornaments. And then like I said, this game was already in there, but I added a worksheet. So they're basically trying to figure out which words rhyme and which words do not rhyme. Um, so they would say bat, does it rhyme, yes or no, until they found um, which one rhymed and they would add it to that tree. So a fun rhyming game. And if you want to make um, my center packs and new file folder games, what you would do is super simple. So you would just take the file folder. We'll just pretend this is my file folder and you could just open it up and you just glue it to the inside and then you would add Velcro to the back of these and then Velcro dots on here and they would just match them up. So my center games are really easy to make into file folder games because I know some teachers love having their center games as file folders just because they're easier to keep organized and um, get out because all the pieces are like stuck in there, right? They don't lose anything. So that. Are you guys ready for some of the new math? Oh my gosh, you guys. This one is so much fun. So... We gotta love shapes. And I feel like first semester, you really, they're really, we're working a lot, a lot on shapes. So I have two different levels to this game. So this is, we're baking up some shapes. We got some little elves. So I either have a one where they can trace the shape and you can totally laminate these and they can use a dry erase marker on them. Um, or this one, they can actually trace and with a marker or these are in here too. Sometimes I know people want, um, they don't wanna print every center and color. So these are perfect. You could print on like red or green paper to save ink. So that way you're not printing every um, activity in color. And then there are two levels to these. So each board has nine shapes, but this one has more of the basic shapes with um, the basic shapes. And then we have like the star and the heart and the crescent. And then this one has the basic shapes, but it has the trickier shapes in it. So like the pentagon and the octagon and the hexagon. And then we have little cookie cutter, um, little cards. So they would say, star, is that on my map? 
and then they would have to cover it. You can use anything to cover it. Um, and again, if you laminate it, they can trace it with a dry erase marker. They can cover it with a little sprinkler. Since it's cookies, you can have them. They can pick up the cookie cutter with the spatula just to make it a little bit more fun and sneak in some fine motor work because as they're you know, picking it up with their spatula, they're using that, um, that wrist and that upper arm um, that they need, those muscles, when they write and do all the things. So add a little spatula. And this one is a brand new game that again, added to the Christmas pack. It's gonna be so fun. Your kiddos are going to absolutely love it. And I know there's um, two options in here, but I also added um, two worksheets um, to go with it as well. One for the tricky shapes and one for the basic shapes. So that is another game you can do. And then this is another new um, addition to our pack. So this one is a sorting game. So what they are gonna do is they are gonna grab a sorting mat and then I have these sorting ornament cards included. Um, but if you have shape buttons, um, you can put this out for that. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna sort the ornaments into large, medium, and small. So they have to figure out if this is large or small or medium. So this one will be large, medium, and then small. And then if you have shape buttons that are different sizes, um, I actually didn't have any teeny tiny ones, so all my small buttons are round, but that's okay. Um, I did have large and small, um, but bigger buttons. So I just grabbed those. And again, if you don't have the buttons, you can put out pom-poms. So you like the bigger pom-poms and the little itty bitty pom-poms, that works too. Um, so yeah, so there's you can sort by size. And then you can also sort by color. Super simple, it's just a red and green sort. So they can sort the, the actual buttons or the shapes. And again, you can use pom-poms. They can sort as well. They don't, you don't have to use these included cards. You can just use the mats. You do you and you do what works for your kiddos. Totally. And then there's also a shape sort. So they have to match the top shape. So this one will be circle and triangle. And this one does have a right triangle in it, which um, can totally throw some kids off because they are so used to seeing this um, triangle that when they see a right triangle, sometimes it kind of throws them for a loop. So I did put that in there on purpose. So just so you know. <laughs> and then they are gonna sort those shapes. And again, they can use the buttons, buttons, <laughs> or they, oh, that's, I, apparently I need to learn my shapes. They um, can sort by shape with the cards or the buttons, whatever you want to do. And I did add a worksheet for this one. This one you would just color, and they're coloring if it's small, medium, or large. So that's the fun new one. Again, I will add these later tonight. So close to being finished. Oh my gosh. Okay, so everybody loves um, trains and the Polar Express during Christmas time. So I thought, why not make, okay, I love this one too. <laughs> this one is so fun. A little number train. So I poked, like I hole punched little holes in the cards on both sides. So then they had to, they have to put them in order and you can link them up with the chain. If you don't want to do the chain, you don't have to. Totally, totally an option. Um, and then the, there is a caboose. It goes up to 20 and we have a little um, snowman caboose. So that would be like the end of your little train. And if your kiddos, if 20 is too big for your kiddos, no worries. Just do it up to the number that they can do. If you're only going to do it to seven, just do it. Just have them make their number train to seven. If your number train, if they are higher level, um, or maybe you're doing it for a small group and you want it to go to 15, have it go to 15. Or you can do it to 20. You can also put this in a pocket chart. That works too. And then I also wanted them to um, count um, and match quantities to the number. So like this one is two. So they can put the two in the two train and this one's one. And again, it does, I do have them going up to 20, so it has like the double 10 frame on it. All right, so there's some of the higher number cards, so that way they are matching, and they can put it in, 
or they can put it under, whatever they wanna do, whatever you wanna do. And then if you want to add even more counting and more fine motor work, they would have to count out objects. I just have little mini erasers. You can use pom-poms, gems, whatever you want. So yeah, so we have one, two, three, and then so on. And I thought about this too. If you teach kindergarten, maybe you don't wanna start at one. Maybe you wanna give them numbers like, you know, five to 15, and they have to put those numbers in order. So you don't always have to start at one. That's a really fun way to kind of make it a little bit trickier, but a really fun number train um, with a snowman and Santa. All right. So that is another fun one. Oh, and then I, I did put some worksheets in with this one too. So, oh my gosh. So much fun game was in there but I love this game and you'll see this game in almost probably all of my center sets in some kind of shape or form so basically they are just rolling the dice and they are counting out the quantity so they will roll the dice one and if you want to add some fine motor add a tweezer one and they can put it in and they roll the dice again maybe they get three one two three I like to have my kiddos count in their hand first so that way if they don't stop when they get to three, I can be like, oh, how many, what, you rolled three? We'll pretend. I rolled, I rolled three and, oh my gosh, I have a lot in my hand. Okay, put them back and then let's count to three. Ready, one, two, three, stop. And then they get to three and then they can put it in. So any kind of decorations would work. You can use mini erasers, pom-poms. These sparkly pom-poms I got at the Dollar Tree and they are so fun. Um, so yeah, so super a super super fun one and then also there's a dot at one so they could roll the dice and then put that many dots on there because some kiddos really like to take home their work um so that is a fun way to do that and then if you want to make it a little bit trickier for my kindergarten friends i actually added an, an, an addition worksheet to this game so they are going to roll two dice we're gonna pretend I rolled two and th a two and a one. So I would do two plus one equals three. So I'm gonna count out three, one, two, three. And again, add that tweezer for some fine motor work. And then they're doing um, addition. I have some fine motor work, making it hands-on. And then they can also write that equation down. Another, another fun game but super, super hands-on. And again, these sparkly bomb-bombs are from the Dollar Tree. They are so fun. Okay. And I did the addition worksheet was added, so that was a new piece to it. So we have, you, get, you have to have, even if you're not doing a gingerbread theme, I like to um, still have a little bit of him in the Christmas pack. So for this activity, you have a number line either goes from zero to 10 or zero to 20. And let me show you my trick on this one. So you only tape one side of the number line and you can do this. I just have this one cardstock, um, but if you laminate it, just tape one side and look at folds and you can put it in your folder. Such a great trick. So what they do is you put both gingerbread, and gingerbread people at one and then they roll the dice. So he got six and he would move to six and then this one would roll and then they got to six too. I say, oh my gosh, we're equal. We're at the same place. And then they roll again they got two and he would go one, two. So it's a fun way to start counting on and you can say, oh, um, I, my number is bigger than yours. We're equal to. So sneaking in some math vocabulary as well. And then I do have them filling in a number line so they are counting on. So this, the worksheet part of this was added um, this game was already in there, but I just added the worksheet to this game. So, so fun. Could I say so fun? Like, more time, probably. Sorry if I'm driving you crazy with that tonight. <laughs> All right, so again, this was another measurement game. It was already in the pack, but I wanted to add a fun worksheet to this. So what they're going to do is they're going to measure how many cubes tall it is, and they're going to write that number at the bottom. But I think... This was before I added on to this pack. This was my favorite activity. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna take an ornament ruler and then they have all of these different present shapes, right? And then what they're gonna do 
is they get to pick a toy. So let's pick out something small. So we're gonna pick out this basketball. So first thing they're gonna do is try and find the present that matches it. So that one is too big, this one is too small, this one is just right, so it fits perfectly. So they have to match it up so they can wrap it. And then you also, they can also measure how big it is. So this one is one, two, this ball is too big. Or they can measure a really long train. And again, they have to find which present they can wrap it in. And again, they're just comparing lengths. So really fun, hands-on way to do measurement. This one is too small. So maybe it's this one. Oh, it is. And then they can measure how big it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This train is nine ornaments big. So a fun non-standard measurement game, making it hands-on. Um, but again, so fun. <laughs> so. And then again, I added this worksheet, and when you wake up in the morning, it will be there. All right, my pile is too big over there. And then I wanted to show you the last two games that are included. They were already in the unit, but I just wanted to show you in case you don't have this one yet. Um, this is just a extend the pattern and make a pattern. So they are just extending the pattern. So it would be tree, reindeer, stocking, tree, reindeer, stocking, tree and then reindeer. So they are extending it, and then to take it to the next level, they can make their own. And again, you can use the included cards. You can have them make their own with mini erasers, totally up to you, or pom-poms even. Um, if you don't have mini erasers, because I know Target for some reason did not have them at the dollar spot this year, um, so they can make them with pom-poms, or maybe you have bows, so they can do pom-pom bow, pom-pom bow, whatever you wanna do. I love these little bows. I usually get these at the, the Dollar Tree or like you get like a tube of them at like Walmart. The little tube of bows, they're so fun. And they're perfect for little learners because they're so tiny. And they're great manipulatives for counting. And then there are number puzzles also included. Um, these are really fun to put in like a sensory table or a little sensory bin or like a bin of pom-poms and they have to pick out both pieces or pick out one piece and then find the match. I just didn't, I only cut out a couple of these to take the picture. <laughs> I was on a time crunch. Oh, and this one does have a worksheet. And so this one also has a worksheet. So those are some fun ideas I had. And then I wanted to close end this by doing some fun butcher, acti butcher paper activities. Um, that way you guys don't need anything for these. So one fun butcher paper activity you can do is you can draw a whole bunch of trees. So you would draw trees all over this. And I'm drawing them upside down so you can kind of see them. <laughs> and then little trunks. And what you can do, you can do so many different things with these. So you can write a number in them. Or you can draw dots in them. And so they would have to put that many ornaments on the tree. And you can use these. If you have a bunch of real ornaments, you could use those. You can use mini erasers, whatever you want to do. So they can put three on this one. And then for this one, they can just match the dots. So one, two, three, four. So that's one thing you can do. You can also, this one is really fun, make Christmas lights on your trees. So we'll pretend like these don't exist anymore. <laughs> okay, those, those are gone. So what you can do is draw a whole bunch of trees all over your board and you can start a pattern. And I wanna show you a way that you can do this so that way um, you can like reuse this. So like if another kiddo comes in, oh, well that's, that isn't helpful at all, is it? <laughs> there we go. So they can go red, green, red, green. And then maybe this pattern is red or green, green, 
red, red. And then what they're gonna do is take these pom-poms and they're gonna extend the pattern. So rather than doing more dots on it, they're just gonna use pom-poms or gems, whatever you have. Or um, I know some teachers have them do the dot markers, but then I feel like um, if another, if once they do it, like your the activity's done and the paper's wasted, um, so you can keep this for the next year, um, but they can just keep making the ornaments all the way down and then whoop, when they're finished, they can clear off all the ornaments and put them back in. So that's another fun one you can do. Put letters in them. So move this one more time. So again, you could, and you don't have to do trees. You could do a wreath. with a big bow. And then you could just write a letter on all of them. You could do a letter going around like A, M, Q, and then draw another wreath down here, and another one down here, and with the bows, and then all you're gonna do is they're gonna take letter beads or magnet letters, and they are just going to match the letters. I don't know if I did that one right. <laughs> no, I'm trying to write upside down and backwards for you guys. So you can see, you can do that too. And then again, they would just take the magnet letter and they would match on the wreath. So if you don't wanna do trees, like all the time, you can totally do a wreath. And if you guys have any more fun, any, if you guys have any butcher paper activities that you love, put them in, um, oh goodness, put them in the comments or the Facebook group and we can all learn and be inspired by each other. So I hope you guys loved all of the fun Christmas activities that I shared with you guys tonight. Again, once you buy something from my store, you get all the updates for free. Um, and I do update things periodically and if you don't know, or if maybe you want to check and see what resources you own from me or from anybody that you've purchased on from TPT, um, what you do is you go to my purchases tab at the top and then you click, um, there'll be like a little drop down menu once you see all of your purchases. You can click recently revised and it'll populate um, and it'll pull up all of, the, all of the units or items you've purchased from TPT, myself included, and it'll say um, if they have been um, updated since your last download and it will also tell you when you downloaded it the last time which is super super helpful that way you don't have to go do I have that update do I not have this one um, so yeah and a way for you to tell just kind of moving forward if an app if something if, if you have the center pack that has been updated or not the first page of the unit will look like this so that's and then once I update all of them I'm gonna update all the covers um, so yeah, so if you, that'll be like kind of like our our way to tell which units are updated and which ones haven't been. And that way you'll know too, like if you open your unit and it looks like this or it looks has the old cover on it, you'll know um, if you need to download it again. So you guys have an amazing night. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us or joining me. Bye.